More and more people travelled on the Fat Controllers Railway. More and more ships came to the harbours. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. The trucks complain bitterly, but then trucks always do, and no one takes much notice. The coaches complain too. No sooner had they arrived with one train than they had to go out again with fresh passengers as another. We don't know whether we're coming or going, they protest. We feel quite distracted. No one can say, grumbled Henry, that we're afraid of hard work, but... We draw the line at goods trains, finished Gordon. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, yuck, put in James. What are you boiler aching about, asked Duck. I remember on the Great Western... That tin pot railway? Tin pot indeed. Let me tell you... Silence, ordered the well-known boys. Let me tell you that an engine for goods work will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The news was received with acclamation. The fat controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. Then send the other one back at once. Certainly, sir, but which? The fat controller stared again. Engines have numbers, Inspector, he explained patiently. We bought number 57646. Send the other one back. Quite so, sir, but there is a difficulty. What do you mean? The two engines are exactly alike, sir and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. The fat controller seized his hat. We'll soon settle that nonsense, he said grimly. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? Uh, they more than slightly slip it off, sir. You can who it is. The engines spoke in chorus. I know, accidentally on purpose. The twins looked pain. Sir, you wouldn't they be thinking we lost them on purpose? I'm not so sure, said the fat controller. Now then, which of you is 57646? That, sir, is just what we can in mind. The fat controller looked at their solemn faces. He turned away. He seemed to have difficulty with his own. He swung around again. What are your names? Donald and Doogie, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which one of you is which. Och, you'll no get muckle help for him, sir. Why? He does not ken our names, sir. Who could he? We only gain ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. He walked sternly away. Soon, workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine, and Douglas ten. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. You may have noticed, Doggy, that young painters forgot something. Where did they forget? <laughs> they painted brand new numbers on our tenders, but they put name on us. Donald went broadly at his twin. 
you mean, grinned Douglas, that we can just that? Chuckled Dunn. Hold your wish. Here's the inspector. Now nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Dunn. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins and Jordan's. And we're soon friends with Dunn. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods, trains and coaches easy. For once the twins had shunted them, trucks knew better than to try any tricks. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck, but take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Denny fast yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't he be making fun of us, would you know? asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, no, certainly not, said Henry. That's fine said Douglas. No, just mind the bathia and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express. It's called the Wild Norwester and is full of people from England, Wales and Scotland. There is also a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. When the other coaches are taken away empty, engines have to remember to shunt the special coach to the bay platform. It does not wait there long. Thomas, with Annie and Clarabel, comes hurrying from the junction to fetch him. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard while Donald waited to take a goods train to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding, then ambled along to join Donald at the water column. As he went, Thomas scampered by whistling cheerfully. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Cooch, asked Donald. What cooch? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Losh sakes, said Douglas. I mon her stole the special cooch with the others. Do you see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the fat controller. He'll be coming here next. No, listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then a war with you, Donald, and tack you on goods. Denny fash about us. Quick now. Do as I say. The fat controller and three passengers walked towards them. But Donald, with Douglas's tender, tent, was out and away with the goods before they came near. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said the fat controller, number nine, and why have you not taken the goods? My tender is a war, sir. 
The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see. Some defect, no doubt. Tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Maybe, sir, put in Douglas. He saw your coming and thought he was late. Hmm, said the fat controller. He turned to the passengers. Here, gentlemen, are the facts. Number ten has been shunting the yard. Your coach disappeared. We investigate. Number ten, uh, disappears too. You can draw your conclusions. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. His shoulders twitched. He wiped his eyes. Douglas wondered if he was crying. He was not. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? The fat controller scolded both engines severely. There must be no more tricks, he said. I shall be watching you both. I have to decide which of you is to stay. He strode away. The twins looked glum. Neither wanted to stay without the other. They said so. Then, what is to do? wondered Douglas. Och, said Donald, each morn be as good as the other, so he'll have to keep us bath. Their plan was good, but they had reckoned without a spiteful brake van. The van had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when he had to take it out. Then his trains were late. And he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald one day. It's to leave you behind, I'd be bunting. You can't, said the van. I'm essential. Ach, are ye? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spike Duggy, would you? Tack that! Oh, 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 cried the van. Hold your beast, said Donald severely. There's more coming, sin you misbehave. The van behaved better after that. Douglas's trains were punctual, and the twins felt happier. Then, Donald had an accident. He backed into a siding. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time and crashed through the buffers into a signal box. One moment the signalman was standing on the stairs, the next he was sitting on the coal in Donald's tender. He was most annoyed. You clumsy great engine, he stormed. Now you must stay there. You've jammed my points. It serves you right for spoiling my nice new signal box. The fat controller was cross too. I am disappointed, Donald, he said. I did not expect such a, a clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir. But Donald didn't say what he was sorry for. We know, don't we? I should think so, too, went on the fat controller indignantly. You have upset my arrangements. It is most inconvenient. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. The fat controller was right. James grumbled dreadfully.
Any one would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. I heard tell, he went on, about an engine and some tar wagons. Gordon and Henry chuckled. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. Wheel, 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 said Douglas innocently. Surely, James, it was not you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He was sulky next morning and wouldn't steam properly. When at last he did start, he bumped the tracks hard. He's cross, sniggered the spiteful brave man. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, whispered the van to the trucks. Hold back, giggled the trucks to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edwards Station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These trucks are playing tricks. Well, show them, said Douglas grimly. Come on, come on, come on, puffed James crossly. Get moving, you, get moving, you. Off Douglas from behind. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the umbling trucks up the hill. I can't do it, I can't do it, he panted. Lay it to me, lay it to me, shouted Douglas. He pushed and he puffed so furiously that sparks leapt from his funnel. Oh, uh, groaned the van. I wish I'd never thought of this. It was squeezed between Douglas and the trucks. Go on, go on, it screamed. Go steady, the van's breaking. It was too late. Edward brought workmen to clear the mess. I might have known it would be Douglas. I'm sorry, sir. Maybe I was clumsy, but I wouldn't be beaten by yon Trixie van. I see, said the fat controller. Douglas was grand, sir, he said. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said the fat controller dryly. I want to be fair, Douglas, he went on. I admire your determination, but I don't know. I really don't know. He turned and walked thoughtfully away. He'll send us away for sure, Donald. I'm thinking you're right there, doggy. The luck's I been against us. An engine does not come what's a day for the best. Snow came early that year. It was heavier than usual. It stayed too and choked the lines. Most engines hate snow. Donald and Douglas were used to it, with a van between their tenders. 
Then each with a snowplow on their fronts they set to work. They puff busily backwards and forwards patrolling the line. Generally, the snow slipped away easily, but sometimes they found deeper drifts. Then they would charge them again and again, snorting, slipping, puffing, panting, till they had forced their way through. Presently, they came to a drift which was larger than most. They charged it and were backing for another try. There was a feeble whistle. Losh sakes, Donald, it's Henry. Denny fash yourself, Henry. By the way, we'll hear you out. The fat controller was returning soon. The twins were glum. I'll send us back for sure, they said. It's a shame, sympathised Percy. Lots of nonsense about a signal box, grumbled Gordon. Too many of those, if you ask me. That brake van too, put in James. Good riddance, that's what I say. They were splendid in the snow, added Henry. It isn't fair. They all agreed that something must be done. But none knew what. One day Percy talked to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. He explained what that was. Percy ran back quickly. Edward says we need a depot station, he told the others. Of course, said Gordon. The question is... What is a desperation? asked Henry. It's when engines tell the fat controllers something's wrong and ask him to put it right. Did you say, tell the fat controller? asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon at last, the Percy be our, um, disputation. I squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That's settled, then, said Gordon. Poor Percy wished it wasn't. Hello, Percy. It's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Some trucks went flying. Eh, uh, yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? Please, sir. They've made me a desperation, sir. To speak to you, sir. I don't like it, sir. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? He asked. Yes, sir, please, sir. It's Donald and Douglas, sir. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That'd be dreadful, sir. Please, sir, don't send them away, sir. They're nice engines. Thank you, Percy. That will do. He walked away. I had a deputation yesterday, said the fat controller. I understand your feelings, but I do not approve of interference. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. What colour paint would you like? The twins were surprised. Blue, sir, please? Very well. But your names will be painted on you. We'll have no more mistakes. Thank you, sir. Does this mean the both of us? The fat controller smiled. It means... But the rest of his speech was drowned in a delighted chorus of cheers and whistles.